Here's what's coming up on April Conversations with Archbishop Joseph Kurtz. At the Vatican, Pope Francis begins his papacy. Some thoughts from the Archbishop. Continuing the discussion about the Creed and Easter. Two special guests talk about parish evangelization. Archbishop Kurtz shares his Easter message. The conversations for April start right now. Welcome you to the April edition of Conversations with Archbishop Joseph Kurtz. As always, it's good to see you, Archbishop. Well, it's good to see you, Reed, and Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, too. We are in the Easter season celebrating new life, and in our church, a lot of new life. A new pope to talk yeah, about. Isn't that pope wonderful? Francis. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, give me... Uh, Let's go back a little bit. Where were you when the white smoke came out at the Vatican? Well, I was at the rectory uh, where I live at the cathedral rectory getting ready for an evening meeting. And uh, I thought, well, I'm just going to watch until the black smoke comes up because it was only the fifth vote. Right. And when I saw the white smoke and I heard over TV the bells ringing and then I wasn't sure if I was hearing things. I actually thought I heard bells ringing near me. Father Jeff Nicholas told me later that he went down and started to ring the okay. cathedral bells. So, so you were hearing it. So, so it really was. So what a what a great gift to our church, huh? In the early days of his papacy, what impresses you? And there's much oh, there's so about much. Pope Francis. Well, first of all, he's he's captivated not just the members of our church, but our whole world has. He really it? has. Yeah. And what what really I, I've told this to so many people, when he came out and he first began to pray. And as I've said to others, he used prayers that I know. He used the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and Glory Be. And they're prayers that, uh, gosh, parents, after they teach their children, now I lay me down to sleep, that's, they're, they're saying the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Our Father, then the Hail Mary, and Glory Be. So he, he, to me, he was saying, I don't want to simply pray for you. I want to pray with you. And what th th that, uh, and then, of course, he asked for silence so that pro uh, they might, uh, the people in the square might pray for him. And then he gave his blessing. I, I just thought that in, what was that, two minutes? Yes. In those two minutes, I felt uh, I'd known him for, for years and years and years. He was able instantly to, to, to take, to captivate a situation totally. He was, he was. And of course, uh, it was a surprise with the name he chose. Yes. No one has ever, as a pope, called himself Francis. And of course, Francis of Assisi is known universally for his simplicity, his love of people and nature. Um, recently, uh, things have been coming out of what a simple life Pope Francis has left, has lived before uh, he became pope and now continues. And then this message for peace. I noticed he said, and this is where he connected himself with Pope Benedict. He said, if we want peace, though, we can't all just make up our own truth. Peace has to be founded on some basis in nature and for us in revelation. A, a couple of things come to mind. First of all, he, he is not impressed with the trappings of office. No, they no, you're right. And he is very accessible. In his first mass at the Vatican, he greeted each and every parishioner there. Yeah, he did. And, and there, it, that seems to be typical of how he was as the Archbishop in Buenos Aires. Rode the I've bus to work a lot. Well, I just saw a picture of him on the subway. And so I thought, well, now that, that's a very humble man, but also very gifted. I think we, we make no mistake about it. He's a good administrator. He was a teacher. He's a, a theologian, so he's a very, very gifted man. Thank God he is uh, succeeding Pope Benedict in uh, what's called the Patrine Ministry. Really, it's a service. He's the servant of the servants of the Lord, and so he will lead us uh, to Christ and with Christ. And yet he didn't really separate himself from 
Pope Emeritus Benedict. He no. called him his brother. He did, and they had a, a beautiful meeting. Yes, they yeah, did. Exactly. And both prayed at the same kneeler. He, d he didn't go up to the one reserved for the Pope. He right. said, no, we'll pray together here. Right, right. Uh, r really, there's such energy. There is. And it's, w what a wonderful time as we uh, find ourselves in the Easter season. And, and let's continue our discussion that we began uh, last month about Easter, about Article 5 and 6 of the Creed. Yes. And Easter. Yeah. Let me begin, read by mentioning uh, what the articles are. It's very brief mm -hmm. from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and maybe it could be shown as I read it. Uh, it says simply this, and he rose again, meaning Jesus, and he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. That's the mystery of Easter. We say those words a lot. We do. We say it in the creed all the time. And so the Easter season continues now for, for 50 days, beginning with the great Feast of Easter, which right. we've had, to Ascension and ending with Pentecost. It does. And remember, Easter is so important that we talk about the Easter octave. Octave means eight. Mm -hmm. And so actually, Easter is literally eight days for us. It's Easter Sunday, but it's that whole week uh, completing itself in what we would call the second week of Easter. So the Easter octave stretches out much as the Christmas season stretches out. Uh, a wonderful way for us to give testimony to the risen Lord Jesus. What is important for us to understand about the resurrection? Well, if you don't mind, uh, I'll, I'll go back, read again to something in the Catechism, and maybe, yes. as I mentioned it, it could be shown to we our will. viewing audience. Uh, really, the climax of the good news of Jesus Christ is this. Here's how it says in the Catechism. The resurrection of Jesus is the crowning truth of our faith in Christ, a faith believed and lived as the central truth by the first Christian community, handed on as fundamental by tradition, established by the documents of the New Testament, and preached as an essential part of the Paschal mystery along with the cross. And so the, the Catechism makes it very clear it's important to understand the resurrection as an actual event. It is. You know, there are some people who are tempted to think, well, maybe this is just a symbol uh, as we often say, well, I'm, I'm getting myself up and rising again, so to speak. Uh, but it's not. The, the tomb really was empty. And the testimony of the first apostles was so clear. They would not have been so excited, uh, especially people who were so down-to-earth people, mm -hmm. with some symbolic rising from the dead. Now, it's not uh, an interesting, this might be of interest to people listening, it's not resuscitation. You know, sometimes we know people will be very sick. They'll go into a hospital and they will uh, be, in a sense, brought back to life. Mm -hmm. Well, this was similar in the Gospels when Jesus brought his good friend Lazarus back to life. But Lazarus would die again. Uh, resurrection is different than resuscitation. Resurrection means that Jesus uh, took on a glorified body. He will never die again. And that body means he truly is himself, but he, he is risen and able to live of uh, the joy that hopefully all of us will follow and live to as, as risen bodies. I've heard it said, Archbishop, that the resurrection, the belief in the resurrection is the basis of everything. It is. I had trouble when I was in a seminary trying to understand that, but in essence it says this, that we could try to live a good life, but every one of us needs to face death. Uh, resurrection means that there is hope, that death is not the end. And this really captures uh, what is the great gift and joy of the Easter season. That's a great message for Easter too, Archbishop. It is a great Easter season we're enjoying this year with the message that we renew and talk about and the new Pope that we're celebrating. Sure is. We take a break here. We've got more to come on the April edition of Conversations with Archbishop Joseph Kurtz.